before I get started, let me say to the dude, Grand Kush, K-U-W-S-H, Grand Kush or Grand Kush, however you pronounce that, the guy that came on my page and left a comment that said, we are not Indians in response to my community post. You know what's really sad about coons like him? Is out of everything that I said in that community post, that's the only thing he got from me is to argue about endonyms and exonyms. I never said that we actually ever called ourselves Indians. I'm for one, I don't get caught up in names and stuff like this because I know that endonyms and exonyms can vary just depending on who's saying what at, what at what point of time. So I don't get caught up into names. I'm not like Dane Calloway that wants to prove that we called ourselves Nietzsche or something like that, Nietzsche before the white man came. I don't get into that. All I know is that we are the indigenous population of the Americas and West Indies and we was not brought from Africa over here to be slaves. That's what I know. Now, to this video, Karen Hunter said something that I found very, very intriguing. She talked about the, the covert social operation that white supremacy uses against black people. And she said how they formulated in the form of propaganda under simple terms, you know, catchphrases, and you know, they keep it real simple and they beat it down our throats and they keep us on our heels, finding ourselves, defending ourselves against foolishness instead of addressing the real problems that we face in America as black people. And, and what I found interesting about this being that she is an educated black woman is that these are the same tactics that black women have been using against black men for the last 50 years, but they can't see that. It's amazing how they can see it when they're talking about white supremacy as far as what they want as black women, but they can't see that they deploy the same tactics and strategies and, and methods against black men in their personal war against us to the delight of white folks. There's like a massive strategy that may be 400 years in the making and the, they have the playbook, they have the, the cheat sheets that they hand out to everyone, they have the talking points, they keep them real simple, you know, and then they just ram them down our throats. <laughs> it's like, and then you end up on your heels defending nonsense as opposed to trudging forward. We're constantly on our heels, mm -hmm. which is never a good place to be when you're in battle. And we're in battle. Now, before I get started, always remember now, everything I say is not an attack on Karen Hunter. I come in peace. This is why I bought six of these shirts. You know what I'm saying? I come in peace, you know. This is not this is not me attacking Karen Hunter. It's not even me attacking black women. I'm just trying to educate you black men on what's really going on so you don't understand what's really going on. Now, the first thing you gotta understand is that all systemic covert operations follow the same trajectory. They are all the same. This is why it doesn't matter if you're talking about that over there or this over there. The process is always gonna be the same. It all begins and ends was systemically supported propaganda. That's first. You need all socially and systemically accredited people, i.e. college educated people or socially recognized people, right? You need all of the experts, you need all of the academics, you need all of the professionals and politicians and entertainers. You need all of them repeating the same things. You need all of them saying the same things about the same people the same way, right? And once you got that, you just beat it home. You simplify the language, right? You reduce the language to, to simple, simple, simple catchphrases and stuff, stuff that's easy to remember. You know, oftentimes it's baseless, it, it's not true, but it doesn't matter. You reduce the language down, you simplify the language, and you just hammer home, and you keep your enemy on their heels, right? That's what she said, y'all heard her. She said that. And a prime example of this is like, take this whole trans thing. You have, you actually have doctors saying that there's such thing as a trans. They got doctors saying that we have more than two genders as human beings. You have academics saying that we have more than two genders as human beings. You have, you have professionals and experts and all kinds of people that are systemically and socially accredited saying that we, that, that there's such a thing as trans and 
we got more genders you know we don't just come in two genders and all kinds you got this being taught in the colleges this is lunacy but this is this proves that what you need is systemic support and that's exactly what feminism has the holy quran said that this devil is going to make evil fair seem and that's exactly what these people have done they have twisted and inverted everything that's right you know what i'm saying and everything that's truthful and everything that's good they have inverted it and now the bad they make the bad appears to be the right thing they make the evil appears to be the good thing they make evil fair seeming and this is exactly what they do but let me continue now she talked about the simple talking points and keep you and keep the enemy on their heels right and she said that you don't want to be on your heels in battle and this is a battle you don't want to be on your heels because you find yourself defending yourself all the time against foolishness instead of dealing with real topics right that's what she said y'all remember circa the 1980s where black women started saying you can't handle a strong black woman this rally cry was used to shame any black man who refused to engage in physical or verbal altercations with black women men like myself i didn't play that i just i just dealt with other women you know what i'm saying you can't handle strong black women i don't want to handle you i'm gone you know what i'm saying <laughs> I'm not trying to handle you, I'm out. Couldn't shame the strong men. The strong men just wouldn't play that game because they don't want to be beaten on you and that's what they're going to end up doing. So the strong men would just dip out. But what you had was the weak men, the sub-beta males, because the alphas and betas dipped out. You would have the sub-beta males that remained. They will be the ones that deal with these women. And as they get frustrated and they don't know what to do, they start fighting when the women just accuse them of not being able to handle them. You know, you're getting in your feelings. You just can't handle a strong woman. But I mean, how, how are you supposed to deal with somebody that's being antagonistic towards you? How exactly do you deal with that? How do you handle that? I, I have no idea because I don't deal with it. Circa 1985, they started coming out saying, I can do bad all by myself. And this means that if a black man was not well off financially, then he was worthless and inadequate in regards to marriage, right? He was, he was inadequate for marriage. This is what they did. And they drummed it home and drummed it home and drummed it home and never stopped. Circa 1985 to about 1995. This one here had an end date because they had to amend it. Circa 1985 to 1995, they started saying all the good black men are either dead, in jail, or gay. That's what they were saying. Remember that? This was circa 1985 and it stopped around 1995, right? Now, this is something they said without any basis whatsoever in fact or reality to basically declare that all available black men were no good and were inadequate for marriage. That's what they were saying. They tell you all the good ones are dead, in jail, and gay. So that means every other black man that's left is no good. An inclusion of one thing is the automatic exclusion of everything else. If you saying in your inclusion that these are the good men, you enumerating them, you saying the good men are the ones that are no longer alive, they're dead, they're in prison, and they're gay. Those are the good men. So that means any black man that's not dead, in prison, or gay is not a good man. What? Automatically. This is what they said, and they beat it into the young girls growing up. They repeated it nonstop. The experts said it. The professionals said it. Essence Magazine, Jet Magazine, this is all you heard, right? But around 2000, they had to change it because people started pointing out the silliness of saying that the men that are in jail and gay are good men. You know what I'm saying? So they had to amend it slightly. So what they did was they took some of the stuff out. They just said, well, all the good black men are married to white women. That's what it became. Which again, the exclusionary rule. By exclusion, by, by including the ones that you say are good, by enumerating them, you are basically saying that everybody else, all other black men are no good and inadequate. So any black man that's not married to a white woman is a bad black man. What? This, this does several things too. It also says that the white woman makes a man or validates a black man. If he, if he gets a white woman, that means he had to be exceptional. This is Dr. Umar Johnson's belief, right? He said it all the time that, you know, the black men that get these white girls, they 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 filthy rich. I mean, I don't know what world he live on because you can go in a project and find a dude that's dating a fucking Mexican or white girl right now. You know what I'm saying? Right, right now. So I don't know what world he live in.
But this is the kind of stuff he said. He makes it seem like the kind of black men that get white girls are exceptional, right? They like they like in the one percent of the one percent or something like that. This is what he said, but this is not true. It has nothing to do with that. But it also makes it seem like this this is proof that white women only get the very best. So this is something that they believe. So the way they look at it, to be honest, is that if you can get a white girl, that means you are a good man. This is what they're saying. If you could get a white girl, you're a good man. But they don't want to give you credit like that, right? They want to reverse it and make it seem like it's something nefarious. You know what I'm saying? You just a sellout of coon or the white women finessing us and all. You know, they want to make it something that is not, but it's just a, a matter of compatibility, right? But also what they're saying is that any black man that's not with a white woman is inadequate and not worthy. That's what they're saying. Think about it now. Simple talking points that they, they hammer home. And no matter how much we argue with this stuff, no matter how much we talk about it, it hasn't changed. Listen, they started this attack on us really in the, in the late 50s going into the 60s. They just wasn't really attacking us, attacking. They abandoned us already, but they really wasn't attacking us. They started attacking us around the 80s. And since the 80s, no matter what we've done as black men or said as black men, it's, it, it only exacerbated, it gotten worse. But what really made it bad is that there was always a class of black men, the Charlie male, the sub beta males. They have always been right there cheerleading on these black women. And I'm not gonna let y'all forget that, bro. Because these are the kinds of black men right now today that are leading the black red pill, the black MGTOW, black manosphere. These are the same type of black men right now that y'all listen to every day. I just listened to Dr. T.S.I. Johnson go off saying a whole bunch of stuff that I've been saying for 30 years. A whole bunch of stuff. But when I was saying it back in the 80s, I was getting criticized for saying it. I was getting ridiculed for saying it in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? While I was in prison most of the 90s before I went in prison and after I came out of prison because I was gone for most of the 90s. But the short period in the 90s, I was home. I would say these things and get criticized for it. You know, I got ridiculed for it by the same kinds of men that told me I was abusing my children because I didn't celebrate Christmas with them. Because I didn't give them Christmas gifts. And I didn't do like birthdays and all the stuff with my wives and stuff like that. I didn't do like gifts and everything. Oh, you abusive and everything. These are the same kinds of men. Dr. T.S.I. Johnson is the same kind of man that used to criticize me for the way I move. And even after I explained to them why I was doing what I was doing, they didn't want to hear it. Fast forward 30 years later, and now they on YouTube getting praised and patted on the back for saying the same thing that brothers like me have been telling y'all. But y'all didn't want to hear it from somebody like me. Because I say it from a place of manhood. They say it from a place of weakness. See, these dudes are defeated and beat down and kicked around and they're miserable. So they are, they are saying it because they have no other choice but to accept the reality of the situation. Men like me just went our own way. We were saying it back then, the same thing, but we were saying it from a different place. And y'all don't like the place that I say it from because I say it from a place of manhood. I say it from a place of alpha. But let me continue. After 2010, basically it became a free for all on black men. Black men are abusive, they be dads, they don't support black women, they hate black women, they hate their mothers and on and on and on and on. I mean, they just, they just throw everything at us now and just see what sticks. My question is how do you fight that? Because the more you try to debate this stuff, you are on your heels trying to defend yourself against allegations that are not even true. That's why the burden of proof is on the person that said. That's why I opened the video up with this clown talking about we are not Indians, Prove that we are not indigenous Americans, dummy. You can't. Because everything you are gonna grab is some damn book written by somebody else. There is nothing to prove that we wasn't already here. And we got enough things in books to prove that blacks were already here. But somehow y'all won't read that. We, we, we got Ivan Van Sertima. They came before Columbus. You can even believe we from Africa, but Ivan Van Sertima said we were the first ones to inhabit the Americas way before anybody else. We know the Olmecs, we see them pyramids. We know that, that the Mayan were black people. That was not no damn Indian looking people or Mexican looking people, that was us. These are facts that can't be disputed or refuted, but yet somehow these niggas seem to conveniently overlook that. 
but they want you to believe that they love black people. So anyway, how do you fight against this battle, man, when you constantly on your heels? You know what I'm saying? You back your back against the wall and you, you don't know how to move. You know what I'm saying? You can't debate this stuff because this stuff is being systemically supported. Everything black women say is repeated and repeated and repeated. It's in the media. It's in the magazines. It's on TV. Nothing we say is ever repeated. We say they lying. It don't get repeated. So we come to places like YouTube. Black women can talk about murdering us, poisoning us. They can say anything. I can't so much and, and, and say something bad about them without being called homophobic or, 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 or misogynist and get my channel fucking flagged and stuff like that. They can report my video for no reason to have my video flagged. But they can sit there and talk about poisoning us right there on, t on, on YouTube. They can sit there and talk about hurting us and killing us right on YouTube out in the open and, and nothing is done. Because this is that the hatred of black men is systemically supported and our sisters like it because they feel through attacking us, it validates their or solidifies their place among white folks. And that's all they want. They want their proximity to white people. It's all they want. And, and their proximity is really in hating us. And this is why they attack us nonstop. So, my point to all is that I'm going to start showing y'all. I'm going to start using all kinds of different videos to show you that it's the same thing Brother Kush been telling you. I've just been putting it in perspective. Because context, you know, facts without context are lies. I just take the facts. I put it in perspective so that you have better context of what you are hearing. But I'm not going to let you dudes, you same kinds of dudes that I would have problems with back in the day. I'm not going to let y'all get online right now and start saying the same kinds of things that I have been saying that men like me have been telling y'all for 30 some years, 40 years. I'm not gonna let y'all get online right now and take credit like y'all saying something revolutionary when we could have we could have been handled this shit. If y'all listen to brothers like me instead of calling us pookies and lazy and you no know, y'all just criminals and thugs and all kinds of shit, had y'all listened to us, we wouldn't be in this situation. Oh man, y'all ain't here. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Till next time, I'm out here. I'm Brother Kush, a.k.a. The Black Alpha. Salam.